Oh my God. Who is, who is out protesting? Like she's that's yelling at the people that's protesting her. her. That's not the same thing she says. <laughs> okay. I, I don't know. The one thing I've learned through all this is the word grace. And when I say it in my head, I hear you saying it because it's such a Southern word. Uh -huh. But when people were mad at the protesters at the Capitol carrying AKs, I get it. They're scared. They weren't and carrying the AKs. They were carrying ARs. It's two different things altogether. I think they were carrying everything. Well, I would have if I was in Michigan. I want, My daughter wanted to go to the one here in uh, Raleigh, but I had webinars to do that day, so we couldn't ride up there. No, I, I you know, it was like, fine, they're protesting. Uh, they're not helping, but, you know, they're protesting. And the people that are, like, yelling at places for opening, they're, sc they're all scared. Right. Everyone is so. scared. And if it doesn't matter if why you're scared is because you might get sick or someone you love might get sick or you might not have any civil liberties. It doesn't, everyone's right now incredibly fear-based. Of course they are. This is what the media wanted. They divided us by making everybody so panicked. And the people who are hurt the most are the ones who don't have good home life situations. They don't have food security. And I've told my kids this over and over. I'm like, it sucks to have you at home. It sucks that you don't have friends, but there's kids at your school that are abused every day and they're trapped with their abusers right now. And so this stay at home order is sending some kids into a spiral they'll never get out of. And nobody and will it, talk about that. And adults. I mean, the mental health ramifications are, I, I think almost as bad for those that are essential personnel as for those that couldn't work. Mm-hmm. I, I know it's been tough on me and back to work is not the same. People are showing houses, wearing a freaking mask and gloves is like. And the booties. Why are we wearing booties? Has anybody transmitted a virus on their feet? I, I can't figure that I'm not out. Wearing booties. One of my real friends, so almost, she almost broke her leg because she slipped and fell on clean floors and booties. And she's like, I just, I mean, I'm not trying to be ugly, but why do I have to wear these? And nobody can answer it. Yeah, it, it's, we're going on fear base. And, and it's nice because I do have the governor to blame everything on. <laughs> she's, she's pretty dreadful. But my favorite was when her husband went up to their lake house to mow and she's like, he was gone for a night or two. I'm like, you don't know how long your husband was gone. There's a problem lady. <laughs> and I had heard that story from friends in that area before it broke on the media. And he totally was not joking. He, he, he didn't know how long he was up there? Was he? Oh, no, no, no. The rest of the story oh. was he called to see if they could get their boat in. Right. Oh, that's right. But I'm the, if, you, if I'm married to the governor, does that help? <laughs> yeah. I'm like, are you fucking kidding me? Are you kidding me? Seriously? Seriously? But I think, you're gonna, gross. I think you're going to like what I latched on to for a topic. Okay, good. You know, I've been recording the whole time. I'm so tempted to make this like the backstory for our podcast and just post it out there. You know, I always, I, I'm clear. <laughs> I, I, I tell people all the time, like the best thing about running for office is everybody knows how I'm registered now. And so I don't have to make any pretenses anymore. But in the world that we're in right now, no side is correct on stuff. And I think all of us should just wind up saying, screw all y'all, we'll be independent. And well, I, I tend to be more independent, but the story I have for you highlights it perfectly. Okay. So, all right. Hey friends, did you enjoy the backstory conversation? You're probably over there going, what in the hell is going on? <laughs> so welcome to the show. This is Lee Brown right here. And this is crazy shit in real estate. And behind me, if you're curious, I'm using my spooky overcast piece of the picture of the old courthouse in Concord, North Carolina, which was taken by my friend Mike Anderson, because it's overcast on the day that I'm recording this. And this is kind of the mood that I'm in. Actually, I just noticed and Michael has his little watermark on there because he's smart like that. <laughs> I do love that in Concord, we took our old courthouse and turned it into an art gallery. And so it's oh, an neat. amazing, cool place with a theater inside and they support local artists. It's really, really cool. Welcome to Crazy Shit in Real Estate, a weekly podcast where I walk you through some of the wildest, most unbelievable stories you'll hear from the world of real estate. If you like real estate and you love crazy, this is the podcast for you. And so today I'm bringing y'all my friend Stephanie Jones. And so if you look on her Zoom over there, it says, Oop. 
up is the UP and the UPERS are the upper peninsula of Michigan. If you ever wondered, it's the part above the mitten that you probably will never go to because nobody ever goes there. And I'm very upset because I was supposed to get to come visit. Oh, I know. And the stupid coronavirus took that away from me and I'm still angry about that. Stephanie, welcome to the show. We will reschedule. <laughs> yeah, people, because I, I've already told people, I'm like the first people to schedule me I'm on my way there. I don't care if it's by train, plane, automobile. I ain't scared of a damn virus. I'm more scared of the fact that we're losing the ability to have interpersonal relationships oh. and connectivity now because Zoom ain't the same thing, but you know what I mean? It's not. Well, I do say that I'm from the Upper Peninsula of Michigan and a highlight of the Upper Peninsula is A, nobody knows where we are and B, the weather is insane. Yesterday, it was in the 40s and today it could hit 90. <laughs> so that's um, Sybil weather, right? Yes. Yes. Because we're old enough to know who Sybil is. My young listeners and viewers, y'all gonna have to go look it up. I have said many times, it's very, very helpful in real estate to have multiple personality disorder. I think so. I mean, it's an advantage, actually. Yep. And y'all, so, we're, not, we're not making light of mental illness before you start at me with our not taking it seriously. We're for real. This business is all over the place and you have to really be able to adapt. And so we're just saying some people are better at adapting than others, whether it was given to them or not. I, the... Three days after my ex-husband told me he was leaving me, I was asked to fly down that day and teach a class in what we call Lower Michigan, and I did. And so I went and taught for three days, and then a month later, they had me come back and teach another class. And they said, you were so great. You saved us. That teacher was awful. And I said, well, you kind of saved me because I, I had just gotten separated. And they said, how did you do it? And I said, well, my teacher persona did it. I didn't do it, the teacher did. So it really comes in handy. But the Upper Peninsula, the Upper Peninsula is an anomaly in the world because we have a claim to fame that um, doesn't seem to happen elsewhere in the world that I have been able to find. Upper Peninsula of Michigan, that upper half, gets left off of maps or put wrong on maps all the time. Now, I know cartography is a science, but it shouldn't happen over a dozen times that national things like NBC, Mountain Dew, Poo-Pourri, all of them have put us wrong on maps. But the best one ever was a company called TickPix. TickPix is a startup kind of stub hub company for tickets. And they had a map and someone tweeted to them, hey, you left off the Upper Peninsula on your map. And someone in their, I don't know, department tried to be Wendy's funny and responded and said, oh, it doesn't matter. There's nothing but trees up there. Within 24 hours, Tick Picks media rating on Facebook went from four point something to one point something. And it was insane. So the owner of Tick Picks, and I wrote down his name to give him credit, um, Brett Goldberg, this nice young guy from New York City. And he he's like, I don't know what to do. Someone had tweeted, the only thing you can do to redeem yourself is to go to Marquette, drink a Black Rocks beer, shameless promotion, it's my brother's brewery, but it's all over the state in Wisconsin, drink a Black Rocks beer wearing a Stormy Cromer. And if you don't know what a Stormy Cromer is, you got to look it up. It's made in the UP and they're iconic. Um, Al Roker loves his. So wearing a Stormy Cromer and eating a pasty. Now a pasty is not what strippers wear. That's a pasty. A, that's a pasty, spelled the same way. A pasty is a Cornish meat, potato, onion, wrapped in pastry dough. Like that the minor, Cousin of a pierogi? Uh, much bigger, like okay. that big. And it, it's a Cornish English thing. So they said, that's the only way you can redeem yourself. 
So he asked his boss, his wife, who was eight and a half months pregnant, I got to go to middle America. He makes, <laughs> he makes arrangements to fly into Escanaba, which in, in some places of the world, flying in an hour away is not a big deal. Yeah. Luckily, he was not sure how he would be met. And he <laughs> called and hired someone to be security. And they oh. said, they said, okay, you're flying in to Escanaba. I'll pick you up. I will drive you up to Marquette. He went to Black Rocks. He said he was going to Black Rocks. He put his credit card down and he bought beers for the next couple of hours. He bought over a thousand beers that day to show how sorry he was. And now he's turned it into a, I'm not sure if it's a TED talk or just a lecture. So if you Google Tick Picks Upper Peninsula, he has a fantastic lecture on why you don't screw with the Upper Peninsula of Michigan. But to me, it's a greater thing of our social media responsibility. And I wish that I had had this Tick Picks experience before I had my social media hellacious experience. Is that your crazy shit in real estate story? This is my crazy shit in real estate story. Hey, friends, there we go. You're all over there looking up tick pics. And I'm not going to lie to you. I've never heard of tick pics. And so I was thinking of actual ticks. <laughs> <laughs> because there Which, is a lot of wilderness at the UP. And I was like, they have ticks up there and Lyme disease. And so I was thinking you could identify your tick with that website. So they might should change their name. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> What's funny is I, Marquette is, uh, we're technically a micropolitan. We have four industries, we have a university, we have a level two trauma hospital. We're a little bit more... You're swankier than the rest of yeah. us. Yeah. And what, what, do you but, get 120 inches of snow a year? How many inches of snow do you get on average? 200. 200, okay, so I was off. <laughs> but I'm, I'm a city girl. And I say that to my friends across the country and they're like, you live in in the woods up until last summer i had only seen one tick in my life and that was too many frankly ticks are nasty yeah and now there's another strain of them that's coming out in ohio so add that to your apocalypse bingo that's okay the the killer hornets murder hornets they can go after the ticks because you notice the murder hornets didn't last long in the media because they couldn't turn it into something <laughs> they were scared they left <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, this isn't scary enough to make people hide in their houses. Move on. <laughs> Move on. So we all remember 2016 election. 2016, that was the year people unfriended everybody they knew on Facebook and it became an ugly, unhappy place. Because you're not allowed to have different opinions or discussion. No, we have to eliminate people who disagree with us. And have one myopic view of the world. Because homogeneity is the secret to life. No. Give me spice. So uh, we had a Lieutenant Governor, Lisa um, Posthumous Lyons. She, she was running. Hmm? She did? She ran for Lieutenant Governor. But if she did, you said Posthumous. No, that's her middle name. For real? Like her real yeah. name? Uh -uh. Which is a, which is a, a name in um, Michigan politics. Are you serious? Yeah. It means dead, though. It's like her yeah. actual, on her birth certificate name. I, it okay. might be spelled I, differently. I don't know. I got this back. Carry on. <laughs> she used to work in the Grand Rapids, Michigan Association of Realtors. So, and yes, she was running on the Republican ticket. But she was doing a campaign event in Marquette. And because I am active in real estate throughout the state, they invited me to both her rally and she was going to address a class of real estate people. So they invited me to that as well. Well, I was delighted. I had just had breakfast with Debbie Stabenow a few weeks earlier. So I'm, you know, I'm, I'll meet with everybody. Going along with her for her campaign rally was none other than Ted Nugent. The Ted Nugent, like Cat Scratch he, Fever? Yes. So, I got to hang out with Ted Nugent. I'm jealous. That's awesome. He was so cool. He was 
we saw him at the rally. He played guitar at the rally. It was Ted, it was Uncle Ted. You know, I grew up on Wango Tango. So then we went to the university and we were waiting to break into the class and the president of the university was coming by. I got to introduce President Erickson of Northern Michigan University to Uncle Ted. It was awesome. And, and Ted Nugent, in this class, while Lisa's talking, Ted's standing there with his arm around me, and we're chatting. By the way, he has an absolutely hot son, too. But I grew up with Ted Nugent as the rock star. I understand his um, far conservative political beliefs, and that's fine. Right, it's him. I, Not I, us, right? I was... I was very, very excited to put pictures of Ted Nugent with his arm around me, hanging out with Ted Nugent. I, I was excited. I did not know that um, the trolls on social media felt that he was Hitler. Ugh. I put him more along the lines of Joy Behar, outspoken, very political. That's fine. But he's never killed anyone that I know of. And he eats everything he does kill, so that's good. But I know, I'm in favor of that. He's like, I got two full days of, of animosity and anger and awfulness directed to me on social media. My own mother post-shamed me. Mama. And she said, she said, didn't you think that this would be your reaction? And I'm like, no, it's no, Ted Nugent. I mean, rock person. Yeah, no, no. I had one person say, I know your parents and your parents raised you better than this. And although I was doing my absolute best to not engage, I said, my parents raised me to listen to every opinion I can get in order to create my own mind. But it was, it, it was horrible. And it, the fact that you can get post-shamed because you posted a picture and got to spend time with someone who musically is fantastic is one of the things that is absolutely wrong with the world today. Well, you know, it's like the way we're raising our kids, if we're doing it right, is to give everybody a fair shake, love on everybody. People change over time. People are different than you go love on them anyway. But then social media says, if you love on the wrong somebody based on what somebody else told you, now we, now you can't show grace and love. You were supposed to pick and I don't want to pick and choose. I want to love on all kinds of people. I, I'm some kidding. of the people I love, I don't agree with. And that's awesome. Those that's are the, the most fun conversations, right? When you get to disagree with somebody, but because you love them, you hear them. Yep. It's when you disagree with no love and no grace that, there's, there's no fun coming out of that. Oh, and people are just so quick to just jump on you and attack you. And so if I can share nothing with this world, it's that if you don't like what someone has to say, scroll on by. Because it's just... And then love on them and pray over them. If you don't agree with them, pray over them. And, and maybe someone who doesn't agree with you has a point. I can learn new things. You know, there's an interesting thing, and one of my favorite news podcasts is Dan Bongino, because Dan, I mean, he's a little bit inflammatory sometimes, but he's so awesome because he follows everything up with facts. And I, I can listen to somebody being on their particular rant if you give me the facts so that I can think for myself. And one thing he's forever talking about is that if you talk to somebody who wants to destroy you, then you're not going to win them over, probably. But somebody over here at the periphery who needed to know some different viewpoints might hear you. So he's always saying, you know, continue having conversations even when people fight with you because somebody else is listening. You know, it's, again, it's how we raise our kids, right? You, somebody's always listening. So which version of you do you want them to hear? I want them to say, hey, mom met a rock star. Look how cool this is. My, my son did. And I will say, I raised my son with the words, I don't care who you love, I care that you love. Oh, yes, yes. And yes, he, yes. He, the, he internalized that. And he actually called me, he's a airman in Okinawa, Japan, which is not where our family is. That was like a whole family was, you're in the Air Force? 
but it was the absolute right thing for him. And he called me last week before he was going to bed. So as I was waking up and he said, mom, I just wanted to tell you, I really appreciate the way you raised me. And I went, I'm done. Drop the mic. All the, all the anguish I have over what's the right thing to say and should I do this or that, I, I raised a good kid. So that's the key. It is. And plus, you can show them when you get attacked by trolls on social media because there's trolls out there. And then good people turn into trolls by accident because they pile on with all the other angst. If you either don't respond or you respond with, thank you for sharing your opinion or, <laughs> I mean... People, people run away when you're nice to them. I did say bless your heart to one person. You know, <laughs> very phrase. Although I'll tell you the secret in the South though, is that now that we know everybody knows what bless your heart actually means. Now we just say, I'll pray for you. <laughs> we can't even argue with you then. Cause we actually are praying for people all the time, but I do have to pray for people with ugly things coming out of their mouths because if I can, if I can hold it in and I don't have a filter, I imagine they could hold it in too. Oh, cause there's, but you got it. You got to just understand that people are coming from fear and they're afraid. And, and we come from love. Where, where did we get to this fear place? Oh, wait, the media, media. The <laughs> they were told us we're supposed to be afraid. And social media started off nice. Like it was share your day, share your conversations and get to know people better. And then it turns into wildly bad information oh and people taking things out of context and slamming businesses and i really as real estate is such a hyper social business and we do depend on the referrals and the good word of other people it is amazing to me how easy it is to get caught up in a quagmire of of awfulness and I think that's been the hardest thing for me is just to keep my mouth shut and share only privately. <laughs> yeah, like I've walked away from a lot of conversations because if people get too ugly, I, I can't physically deal with it. And one of those things on Facebook, if you are not a real estate agent, you should know that this exists. There is a Facebook group called Bad MLS Photos. And it makes me angry on so many levels that agents will take the marketing done of somebody else's property. This belongs to somebody else. And you're going to talk shit about the photos that they posted, like you're some magical Ansel Adams type person. And then you're talking about the stuff in their house and you're talking about the way they have it arranged. And we've all seen crazy houses and we've seen weird stuff, but to share it in a group so everybody can pile on is like feeding the mean girls. Why do you feed the mean girls? I just, I can't deal with it. So I got out of that group. I can't shut it down. I can't but I, I can be. I, I just keep wondering if isn't that an ethical violation because you're using someone else's copyright? I think so, except that sometimes it's agents sharing their own listings and then they're talking smack about the people who hired them. And to me, that's not good fiduciary behavior. But how, no. do, how, do, you, how do you shut that down? Because social media rewards that stuff. But the good thing that I do when you're in a house that is not photograph ready, which is what I ask for, I will take a picture of their kitchen or living room or problem area and show it to them, take them in a different room and show it to them on my phone and say, this is how you're going to be judged. And they get to see it outside of how they always see it. That's a great idea because it is easy to, when you live in there, you're going to see it from this perspective. And when you don't live there, you see it from here because the, the public needs to understand when the, your real estate agent tells you what Stephanie's telling you, the buyers that we work with, they looked at that house online. They visited it five times and looked at every photo in the deck before they ever called us, before they texted and said, I'm ready to see this. By the time they texted and want to see it, that's like the eighth showing because they've shown their husband and their mother, mm -hmm. and their mm -hmm. best friend, and they might've shared it on Instagram. What do you think about this house? So if your pictures aren't good, the judgment gets intense. And it's not just agents talking smack in Facebook groups. It's are buyers texting a mom thread to ask their opinion about a house? <laughs> I, the easiest sale I ever had, I get a call from someone um, in another part of the state and they said, my friends listed their house with the wrong person. They're really upset. It's been listed for four days. 
they only have two exterior pictures and the comments say good family home and they've asked for more pictures and they sent different comments and the agent hasn't done anything. It's gotten showings, oh. but they're, they're upset. And I said, I'll go meet with them tomorrow. Met with, they actually canceled their listing that night. I got a call before I went because the other office was not smart. And I got a call and they said, Stephanie, I know you're going to be listing Kabagam tom tomorrow and I want to do a second showing. Can you get me in at 6 p.m.? So the listing, previous listing company gave them my name as the next agent to list. That was kind. It was stupid. And it was, it was kind. And I go in expecting this house to need major work because there was no interior pictures. I go in, you could eat off the floors. The house was Spartan. So I list the house, I take pictures, and I tell them we have a showing appointment for six o'clock tonight. That person wrote a full price offer. Wow. I didn't have to do anything. And if that agent had just A, done their job, or B, listen to their client, they would have made the sale. You know, don't we see that all the time? It's like we all make mistakes in a listing. You might need to reword something or reorder your photos because your clients do actually know their own houses and they, they can see it in a productive way because everybody has different viewpoints. I have had great success in listening to my clients on occasion when they point this out. Can you say this? Can you add this? But the beauty is you have to listen. And I think that's what your best realtors will do is be willing to put themselves in second place and say, I really don't know everything. Let me get a little bit better here and, and don't just ignore it. Because I do two things. Better. One, I ask the buyer or I ask the seller, what do you love about your home? And then I write it down. And two, the moment it is listed, I will send that link to the seller as the buyers say it, see it. And I'll say, what would you like me to change? I get their buy-in that first day and then I don't get a call a month later saying, I don't like that picture. Well, you know. By then you've lost your best marketing days too, because no matter what the market conditions are, those first couple of weeks are your prime commodity. If it's poised right. And that's our job. And those that don't do their job should just quit. <laughs> I mean, you know, I just, I do think there's a, a definite need for an apprenticeship period in real estate <laughs> could make all of us better. Absolutely. Hey, Stephanie, if somebody's looking for a great realtor in Marquette or anywhere in the UP or frankly, anywhere in Michigan, because you know, people all over the state, how can they find you and your amazing brain and network? I am stephaniesells.com. So easy. S E L L S or S A L E S? S E. There you go. All right, friends, her stuff's in the show notes for this episode. So you can reach out at any time. And especially if you don't know where the UP is located, you should probably reach out and go make a tour up there and buy a property. Hey, what's the average price point in Marquette as of the recording of this episode on June 8th? About 184. See, bargain. Can you Airbnb up in Marquette? I actually have one myself. Oh, see? So anybody who's tired of the volatility of the equities market should probably reach out to Stephanie <laughs> and see what you can do up in the UP. Stephanie, I appreciate all that you do in Realtor World, and I appreciate your work for heart health awareness and the general cheer that you bring to Realtor life. It's much appreciated. Well, I appreciate all that you do. Help me promote Realtors in Red. Fridays, we wear red in support of all those deployed. And just making me laugh in real estate because there's days that there ain't enough alcohol and sometimes you just need laughter. And look, I hear I had messed it up because in, in my head, red is heart health, but it's deployment for you. So yeah, so when Stephanie does good things, it's for deployed people so close enough. I mean, that is February. <laughs> red is like um, everything. <laughs> Ah, all right, friends, if you want to come on the show and tell me something about your life in real estate, your area of the country, or what you, when you battle the social media trolls too, you can hit me up at Lee Brown on Twitter or any of the social networks. And maybe just maybe I'll feature you in a future episode of the show. In the meantime, five stars and a subscription is appreciated until then. We'll see you next time. 
If you are listening to this episode and you need to tell us something about your crazy life in or around real estate, then tweet me at Lee Brown or reach me on any of the social networks. That's if you're a broker, realtor, investor, inspector, lender, or just a regular normal human being who happens to have dealt in real estate. Subscribe for more episodes. And as always, we are thrilled that you joined us for some crazy shit in real estate. See you next time.